What's up, dude? So I'm back with another video. Um, I'm melting. I don't know about you lot, so I'm so sorry if you see me genuinely sweating in this video because it is absolutely <laughs> boiling at the moment. I'm sure you're all feeling it as well. Uh, but yes, I was having a look at my CD collection, which I recently got out and sort of put on display. And I was thinking, I have some really cool rare CDs. And, um, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that's not on Spotify. Obviously, some of it is. But I thought it would be really cool to share these with you guys because um, these are things that I've created over many years and some weird and wonderful things have somehow found their way to me or I have discovered them in places um, either back in the day or, you know, I haven't bought a CD. I don't think I've bought a CD since 20... I want to say 13 now. Like, I haven't bought a CD since. So these are all obviously pre that. Um, but I think there's some really, really cool stuff in there um that you guys might enjoy so um yeah let's take a look at a few of them right let's start with something really cool um i have this promo copy of metallica's unforgiven 2 um which is brought out in 1997 now this is obviously it does say on there not suitable uh, for promotional use only not for um resale um obviously this is something that would have got handed out to um, you know, people at magazines, um, people on the radio, or anyone that was going to play it. I can't remember for the life of me where I actually got this one, um, but it is really cool to just have like a single disc. Let's see what the disc is saying. So all the Metallica singles around this time were that kind of awesome, shiny Metallica. It's just one song, just that song, nothing else, but it is really cool to have like a, a promo version of such an amazing song um and a pretty cool little find for metallica fans now this one i have talked about on the podcast before go and check out the dear download podcast if you haven't already link in the description um this one i got randomly in camden in like 2000 or something um it's a slipknot album that says massacre on it but it's actually not that because that's not a thing um what it actually is is the first slip my album make feed kill repeat and then loads of random um live songs from like the first tour off of the first album and you can just tell that this is a bootleg because like the inside looks proper dodgy like the disc looks dodgy um the cover doesn't have all the people in it the um the middle part when you take the cd out literally just has a picture of the clown um <laughs> and paul for some reason um i think there might even be something inside the actual i mean you know these people back in the day when they done these bootleg cds they did go to a lot of trouble with them some of them look look much better than others um but some of them they actually went yeah i mean look they went to you know all of that length to get all the pictures of like they're all just random ones from like the first album but I think that this is like a really cool little like bit of history because, you know, no one really makes any bootleg CDs or stuff like that. Well, not that I know of. Um, so it's really cool to have something that's like this rare and weird. Um, obviously, I've spoke about Make Feed Kill Repeat. It is not the best album ever made um, by a long shot. Um, but it's still cool to have something like this. And I remember going to Camden in like 2001 and buying it and being like, oh, my God, I've never heard do nothing bitch slap that sounds like a great slipknot song uh, and then i didn't know it was like freestyle jazz uh, mixed in with metal so go and check out do nothing bitch slap it's not on spotify funnily enough um so another really really good rare one um and just a great little piece of history the next one is very near and dear to my heart um i have been a bullet by valentine fan literally since the beginning of bullet by valentine <laughs> um pretty much um so me and my friend eugene queued outside um I think it might have been Virgin Megastore. It might have been HMV on Tottenham Court Road um, to go and do like a meet and greet with Bullet by Valentine. Um, and they were played like a mini gig for everyone that came as well in the actual store, um, which was really cool. So here I have uh, an original signed copy of Bullet by Valentine's original EP in all its glory. I think it was 2004 or five that we went and got that signed. So original Bullet signatures and just look at the beautiful metalcore emo-ness of them back then like literally this one is so near and dear to my heart it's like one of my tr most treasured memories of going to a gig and those treasured cds they played an absolutely astonishing gig as well they played all of this stuff and they played what were going to be new songs from the poison as well at the time it was like at the time i was just like buzzing it was the coolest thing to like see this band love them straight from the beginning and i have been a bullet fan ever since so this is 
one of my prized possessions. Okay, now this is one that now I'm not proud of, but at the time I really was. Yes, I did go and do a meet and greet with Lost Profits, and yes, I do have uh, a signed copy of the original Fake Sound of Progress, signed by all members of Lost Profits. That's right, I have shook the hand of uh, Ian Watkins before. Obviously, since all that stuff came to light, it's absolutely horrendous. But at the time, uh, being a massive Lost Profits fan, I was absolutely buzzing. And it actually says on there, winner of Best uh, New British Band at the Kerrang Awards 2001. So that just shows you shows you what can happen um, over time. And um, yeah, how weird things can get. Now, to anyone, to the untrained eye, this would look like just a perfectly normal copy of um, Chocolate Starfish and Hot Dog Flavoured Water. But there is a special surprise inside. As you will see from the red disc, this is a complete radio friendly version of the album. So this would have been given out to radio stations or anyone that wanted the music to play it without having the explicit lyrics. So let's just say that Hot Dog that has um, swear word every, you know, five seconds is literally a song of bleeps it's almost unlistenable which is probably why they never played it on the radio but yeah this version has all of the swearing cut out um and i have the original version as well but when i got hold of this and i cannot for the life of me remember how or where i got it from when i listened to it i thought it's so much better with the swearing like when you take the swearing out even though you know it's a great album um but yeah it's it's so weird listening to it um with hot dog without the swearing like specifically it's very very strange so i might try and see if i can find a version of it um on youtube and then uh, link it to you guys because hot dog is the weirdest thing with the swearing cutting out but um but yeah really really cool um weird thing that's hidden within what looks like uh, a normal version of chocolate starfish so a lot like the slipknot bootleg one that i got um i picked it back in the day this one called corn cornography um, which is a load of um, like stuff from the Spawn soundtrack that they've done, um, loads of like original demos of the first album stuff. Um, like it's got the, a Christmas song on it, um, like weird remixes of the songs that are on like the first two albums. And again, with the you know the bootleg weird cover art, it's just got like random pictures, some pictures of the band. I think the insert also has some stuff in it yeah exactly like the slipknot one so they've obviously just put and i'm trying to get the light some you know cool pictures of the band but they're obviously completely random ones from like different times or whatever but it just shows you the lengths oh jesus it just shows you the lengths that these people went to back in the day to get these bootlegs done but i remember really liking this and thinking you know i never at the time you know there was no spotify or anything so you'd have to physically get this media to listen to a remix or demos, especially back in the day where like incredible to hear original versions of song. I know you can go on YouTube now and do all that, but trust me, this was like, wow, I can't believe I want to listen to, you know, alive and blind the early demo versions. They're all rubbish, <laughs> but, but it was really cool to listen to where some of the songs started and that. So yeah, cornography, fantastic. Right now, these two I'm going to do as a double because they are both metal hammer cds from 1999 but you really have to listen to some of the tracks on these now obviously i got these free with metal hammer at the time i have a stack of like paper ones but obviously i could do a whole video going through those because that's a whole different level but these were literally two of my favorites growing up um uh, music noise one and music volume noise two um one is from november 99 the other one is from september 99 um but you just need to listen to some of the tracks on these they're unbelievable like standardly cool metal hammer cds with a really budget metal hammer website as you can see there which is really great trying to get someone to go to a website back in the day um this this one alone has got alice in chains man in the box typo negative everything dies fear factory descent slip not spit it out i was, I was like oh my god this is so great it's will haven cannibal corpse chaos theory rachel stamp like i remember getting these and just being like this is wild there's so many good songs in these cds and this one this one i liked a lot but this one, for me, was the one that got me into a lot of bands. Listen to this. This is just a free CD. And back in the day, there was no Spotify. You know, you had to make your own playlists or mixtapes or whatever. So when I got this, I was like, I'm just going to stick this on. <laughs> Limp Biscuit Break Stuff. Cold Chamber Tragedy. Pitch Shifter Kerosene. Megadeth Prince of Darkness. Misfits Dust to Dust. 
Feeder, can't wait for this go. Static X, I'm a stupid. Fil filter, cancer, Godsmack, whatever. Lit, quicksand, amen, down again. My ruin, sick with it. It is absolutely a tour de force of tunes. And getting one of these back in the day, when you look at Metal Hammer, you'd look at the track listing and you'd be like, oh my God, that is incredible. Like literally, I have... I don't know, I must have 30 of these in, you know, in this form and in other versions all the way from probably 1998 going all the way up to I probably stopped collecting Metal Hammer properly in about 2005, 6 ish is when I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. I had a stack of magazines, stack of CDs. It was getting out of hand. Um, but if you guys eventually want me to do one that's just all about Metal Hammer CDs, I could do an entire video about that and we could run through just loads and loads of tracks on there. But I wonder if there's anything on the inside of these. So again, just like stuff to sell the magazine. So you can see like all the magazine covers there and you can have a subscription and subscribe and make sure that, um, subscribe to the channel as well. Don't subscribe to the Metal Hammer thing. Well, you could do, I'm sure you can still subscribe to magazines. Uh, subscribe to my channel instead. Um, but yeah, it's just really cool to have these, you know, cause you didn't have much back in the day, you would read every single word. Like I would go through these and be like, oh, I'm going to read everything. So, yeah, awesome little bit of history. Um, like I said, I would like to do a whole video on that because I think it would be really cool. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for, um, yeah, listening to me babble on about really rare CDs. Um, but it is cool. It's, it's weird to look back on it now as, like, a really cool time. And it really mattered when you got music, even though I prefer it now because... Spotify has given me, you know, you can listen to as many bands as you want, as many albums, as long as they're on there, discover new bands. It was a lot harder to do that back in the day. So getting these thing was getting like your release radar on Spotify where you'd be like, oh my God, all this stuff is almost tailored for me. And you would listen to the bands on it and think, you know, I don't like that so much, but oh my God, this band are amazing. So I think it's cool to sort of remember these things fondly because um, it's kind of sad that, you know, people these days won't necessarily have that thrill, even though still discovering stuff on Spotify is a massive thrill and I still enjoy it a lot. Um, it's just really cool to have the memories of, you know, getting all these really rare and like crazy CDs. Um, but yeah, again, as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, I've moaned about 60% people so much now that it's actually got down to 59% of people that aren't subscribed. So thank you very much if you have subscribed from me annoying you into doing it. Um, but also if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, just press the button, just press the button, man. Help me out. I want to get to 2K subscribers before the end of the year. Um, I will also soon be releasing some gaming stuff as well. I won't reveal what that is now, but let's just say retro rock related. Um, yeah, so as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you dudes in the next video.